Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, and I want to talk about something that showed up inside of my Google Ads account and share some insights with you about the Google Ads optimization score. So as the story goes, I got an email from Google announcing something called optimization score, and I figured it was going to be sort of underwhelming or something that's an automated attempt to show me what I'm doing wrong or a way to squeeze more money out of me. But I was pleasantly surprised when I went inside of Google Ads and I checked out my optimization score. And so to encourage you to go out and check out your own optimization score, I've created this video to show you exactly what's inside the optimization score section inside of Google Ads, how do you find it, and the insights you might gather from checking out your own level of optimization inside of Google Ads. Do you want to get 100% on your optimization score? Or do you want to get something that you're more comfortable with that helps you generate a bigger profit for your account? We'll discuss that and more inside of this video. Let's look at the Google Ads optimization score. So the question that I have for you is, are your search campaigns running optimally? And of course, the answer to this question is completely subjective because optimal means one thing to one person and means something else to somebody else. And so if you ask 10 people what is optimal, you're going to get 10 different answers. And if you like most people, you're going to choose the answer that gives you what you're looking for rather than focusing on something that's a concrete measure as to whether you're doing a good job or not. And of course, if you've been with me for a while, you know that I think that optimization is good. Nay, great. Optimization is a great thing. It's amazing. And it really is the name of the game if you want to have success with Google Ads. If you're not optimizing, then you're not going to be successful. And if you put things out there one time, if you throw stuff on the wall and you think that it's going to stick, it is not going to stick. And in fact, it's going to be bad. You're going to get bad results. And then you're going to blame Google and say, oh, Google's not fair to me because their cost per click prices are so high. Or, oh, Google's just trying to grab my money. Or, oh, Google, they're no longer don't be evil, Google. They're evil, Google. Well, guess what? If you don't optimize, you're the one who's wrong, not Google. Google puts out a platform that's an auction-based system, and that system is a free market. And so if you're not trying to optimize your position in the free market, then you're not going to get very good results. And guess what? It's probably your fault. And I'm sad to say it. I'm sad to be the one that is a bearer of bad news. But if you're not going and trying to make your situation optimal, then you're probably not going to get optimal results. It's as easy as that. Optimal results come from optimizing your campaigns. But what is optimal? Now, I've talked a lot about the optimization opportunities that are out there inside of PPC course. And just to remind you of some of these opportunities, you have bid optimization, which is where you focus on optimizing your bids to make sure you are bidding the right amount to maximize your profit, your click-through rate, your overall landing page views, and or your conversion rate. All those things can come from bid optimization. You bid more, you get more activity. You bid less, you get more profitable clicks if you do it right. We have things like ad copy optimization. An ad group inside of Google Ads exists simply for you to rotate and to test multiple ads to see which one's going to work better. But if you trust Google's default settings and if you don't optimize this ad copy, you're going to find that you're not getting optimal results. And everything that happens downstream from seeing an ad all the way down to the conversion, all the way down to your return on investment can be improved if you optimize your ad copy. We have landing page optimization, which is optimizing the landing page you send people to, the destination URL of your Google Ads. Match type optimization, making sure you're using the right mix of keyword match types, everything from exact match to broad match, and everything in between like phrase match and broad modified, and not forgetting about negative keywords. We have search term optimization, which is when you mine your search term reports, you find negative keywords, you add new keywords and match types to your account, and you make sure your search terms are optimized. Quality score optimization, improving the quality scores of your keywords by writing better ad copy, getting a higher click-through rate, improving your landing page score, and if you're a conspiracy theorist like me, making sure your account has a high quality score as well. Profit optimization, this goes without saying, optimizing the profit that you get from your paid advertising. Campaign and ad group optimization, optimizing the structure of your campaigns and your ad groups to maximize things. One ad group optimization that we talk about a lot is single keyword ad groups or SCAGs. That's one way you can maximize things by optimizing your ad groups. Instead of having one ad group for all your keywords, you are going single keyword ad groups. You can get all the way down to that level of optimization if you really want to get the best results out of Google Ads. 
We have budget optimization, which is optimizing for clicks and conversions within the budget that you're allowed, making sure you use your daily budget or your monthly budget, however your company or your organization does budgeting, making sure you get the most out of it with the constraints you have. Account optimization, making your account the best Google Ads account that's out there and letting Google reward you for your hard work and making sure that your account is running optimally. And we also have conversion optimization, which is probably the most important of all, and that is optimizing the number of results you get for the people you send to your landing pages. So overall, trying to get more conversions, trying to get more bang for your buck or whatever your currency is when it comes to the Google Ads platform. So we're all familiar with optimization. I've talked about it until I was blue in the face, but until now, it was really difficult to know whether you were optimal or not, or at least in a way that was not self-serving to a vendor or even self-serving to Google or in a way that people could agree on. So there was no such thing really as an optimization score. Sure, WordStream gave you a PPC grader, which would grade your PPC performance. And this has been available for a while. This is a free tool from WordStream to judge your Google Ads performance. But I find that a lot of times third-party tools are self-serving or they're really meant to generate leads and to try to get you hooked onto their system. And so when Google sent out this email introducing us to the new Google optimization score inside of the ads interface, I was pretty excited and I wanted to share a video with you about how this works. So Google introduced optimization score in August of 2018. And you can take a look at this article and you can see what optimization score is about. You can even see a little bit of a preview of a screenshot as to what these suggestions are and how they show up right inside of your Google Ads account. And I just went in and I checked my optimization score and I wanted to break it down, go inside of Google Ads and share with you my thoughts on the optimization score that goes into Google Ads. So without further ado, we're going to go take a live look at my optimization score inside of Google Ads. So here we are inside of Google Ads, we're in the Recommendations tab, and in Recommendations, they've really replaced the previous Recommendations tab with your Optimization Score, and they're giving you percentage as to what you can do if you do these things, how are you going to improve your Optimization Score, and how are you going to make things better. Now the first thing you're going to notice here is that my score is not 100%, and you would think Jeff Sauer, the PPC guy, would have 100% score. Well, I'm showing you an account that does not have 100% score for two reasons. One is that maybe as an advertiser, you don't wanna have a 100% score. Because if you think about it this way, if you have a 100% optimization score, that means that you're 100% compliant with Google in a way that makes them more money. And so if you have 100%, you're basically saying, I'm spending 100% of the money I can spend with Google on their platform. And I usually advise against that because that's not usually your optimal way to get a return on your investment when it comes to advertising. So the first thing is maybe you don't want to be 100% that's in there. And the second reason why I'm showing you this is because if you have a 100% score, that's pretty boring and there's nothing to improve upon. So I'm going to take a look at this optimization score, as you can see here, 77.3%. And I'm going to talk about whether or not I agree with these recommendations, whether this is sound and what you can do when you're looking at your own optimization score. So the first thing you'll notice next to your optimization score is that there's different recommendations and they carry different weights. And if you were to implement all these recommendations, then your optimization score would rise to the point where it would reach 100%. And so they are telling you how you get whole when it comes to the Google Ads ecosystem. Now, if we scroll down further, you can see here, they're asking me to raise my budgets and that's gonna be a 6.1% increase. And obviously that one's a little bit self-serving, but this account that we're looking at is one where I have budgets very low because I don't want to spend a lot of money with Google Ads. And so this might be something where I do decide to raise my budget basically because they're telling me I'm missing out on 5% or more of my potential traffic. Now, if they were to say raise your budgets and that was 50% of the score, I would say, okay, well, all you're trying to do is get me to spend more money. But as you can see here, they're really saying that for $10 more per week, you're going to get another 18 clicks. And so that's pretty reasonable in the context of what we're looking at here. What I would say is whenever you look at these numbers, whenever you look at a recommendation that comes across your account, because your recommendations are going to be different, is that you always take this thing and you put it through a filter as to, is this really right for my business? Or is this right for Google? Or is this just a recommendation that's not very good? And they make it really easy for you, almost too easy. If you see here, you can click on apply and then you can apply this to your account and raise your budgets. Now I would recommend things like raising your budgets that I would do manually. I wouldn't trust Google in this case because even though it says that it's only gonna be $10 a week, you wanna make sure that you look at the end product and the end results. So you might be better off clicking on view recommendation and then you can see here what you're actually getting yourself into, what you're doing, what you're increasing and how this is gonna work. 
And so if you change the budget to the recommended amount, you can see here what you're getting yourself into and what it's going to cost on a weekly basis as an estimate. And then you can see if you multiply this thing by seven or if you multiply it by 30.4, which is a monthly basis, what your budget's going to become. Now, when you look at this recommendation, they're breaking it down in a way that seems like a no brainer. $10 a week, this is going to cost and you're gonna get a lot more results. But what they're not telling you is you're going from 50 cents a day to $5 a day, which is a $4.50 increase. You multiply that $5 number by 30.4, and now they're saying that you can potentially spend $150 a month as opposed to spending $15 a month as this campaign was doing. So it says that it's only gonna be $10 a week, but we're actually saying this is potentially going to be $135 a month, which is way more money. And that's why you always want to be careful when you look at these recommendations, because they're telling you they're going to increase the cost only slightly, but that is not your all in cost. And that is not at the same time period that we normally look at our budgets for. So it might not sound like a lot, but it does add up over time. And when you get to bigger budgets and bigger accounts, you really want to be careful there. This next recommendation is to go to enhanced CPC bidding, which is to bid more on your ads at auction time. Again, this one's just telling you that they're gonna increase your optimization score, but it's not really telling you the downfield repercussions. And when I looked at this recommendation, it really didn't add more color to what was happening here. And so I'm not sure that that's really a good idea or not. It's one of those things where you're gonna to wanna to investigate further to see if that's a good idea. And of course you can do more research by downloading it into a CSV and looking at it inside a Google ads editor, or you can dismiss it if you don't want to do it. Now I'm not going to act on any of these recommendations today as part of this video. I just want to walk through them and show you what Google's recommending to me. This next one, no brainer, add structured snippets to your ads. So this one says you can add more structured snippets to your ads and you can have them show up and it's going to increase things. And there you go, because similar advertisers are using structured snippets. You should use them as well. This one's actually a no brainer and I would recommend doing it. But as you can see here, you can't just go ahead and apply it. You need to add values into your extensions. So you're going to want to go into ads and extensions and make the extension on your account. This is really helpful because it helps you understand if you're missing on certain extensions, just because you forgot to set them up or if something came along since you set up your ads in the first place, that's giving you a reason to make these updates. Moving on, you can see they're suggesting that we create new ad groups, which is always a good idea, creating new ad groups that are more granular in the keywords you're targeting in your ads, in your ad copy, and in your landing pages, because you're usually gonna get better results. So you can see these recommendations, and if you want to, you can create new ad groups from these keywords. Again, you should remember that when you're looking at this data, these recommendations are made by a computer, by a machine, and they don't always understand human context and reasoning for doing something, so this is purely based on machine learning and based on artificial intelligence. Apply your own intelligence to every recommendation to make sure you're doing it right. Moving on, you can see these redundant keywords. Now, if we look at these recommendations, you can see here they're combining certain things together. Google advertising training and Google ads training. They're saying they're the same thing. So these must be close match variants. You might want to look at your data and see if that's true or not and really try to understand exactly what that recommendation means. Again, I'm not going to apply anything in this video, but this is something that I should definitely take a look at and see if they think that ads and advertising is the same keyword. That's actually pretty interesting, especially since this is a phrase match keyword, how they think that they're the same thing. Because I think that advertising and ads are very different from each other. Create responsive search ads. This is on my to-do list, so that's something that I need to do for sure. We have ad groups without keywords. Now, this is just a Jeff problem because I create campaigns all the time for demos for the course, and I must not have put anything into this keyword. So I'm probably just going to delete that ad group versus making that recommendation. And as you can see here, optimize your ad rotation. Now, I always recommend that people use the rotate evenly so that you're not showing ads that Google thinks are performing better more often, especially those that get higher clicks because you really want to be focused on conversions. And so Google's telling me that I should optimize my ad rotation, but that's one that I'm probably not going to budge on. And the reason why is because you're not going to get your best ad results. If you only focus on clicks, you also want to focus on conversion. And so you can look at the recommendations, but you don't always have to implement them. But if I were to summarize my optimization score and what Google has in place, these are really good recommendations and they're things that you can implement pretty easily. I would say that if I implement the ones that make the most sense in this case, I would probably be in a 90 plus percent optimization score. And that is something that I'm going to do once I get done with this video, just to really get that peace of mind and to increase my optimization score, but not to overdo it and not to trust Google blindly 
because these are quality recommendations, but you also want to make sure that they're the right thing to do for your business, for your organization. Whoever you're advertising for, you want to make sure it's the right thing for you to do as well. And so that concludes our portion inside of Google Ads. Let's go and summarize what we learned in this video. So summarizing Google Optimization Score, many of these recommendations are spot on. I really like the recommendations. And frankly, if you're managing a lot of accounts or if you're not logging into Google Ads all the time, these recommendations are really good and they do get you closer to being optimal. And even though I mentioned some bias with Google, I don't find these to be overly biased or really trying to get you to spend more money. These are honest and good recommendations, at least the ones that I see in this demo account. Of course, much like passing the Google Ads exam, getting a 100% score is probably not achievable or advisable if you wanna make sure that you're doing this thing the right way. Remember, 100% is an arbitrary designation Getting above 90% usually is good enough, and as long as you're at a passing grade, and as long as you're doing the right thing for your organization, 100% should not be your end goal, especially if you can understand and justify why you wanna be below 100%. So the bottom line is focus on your results, not on achieving some kind of arbitrary score with Google, and you have nothing to lose by checking your score today. It should be available in the Recommendations tab inside of Google Ads, right inside of your account. And so I'm gonna leave you with this. What is your optimization score? Without having made any changes or implementing anything, what is your optimization score? Did you beat me? Are you lower? Leave a comment and let me know what your optimization score is, as well as the recommendations that Google gives to you to make your account more optimal. I wanna hear about how you're optimizing your account, and I'd love for you to share that with me in the comments.